Welcome to Turn Up the Volume. A local group is continuing their fight to end violence in Mansfield. Mothers United to Save, Standing Against Violence Everywhere is bringing our community together to stand and unite to make a change. Joining me today to share their stories are Mothers United to Save founder Kay Smith and supporter Renee Williams, the mother of Skylar Williams, a young student from OSU Mansfield who was abducted by the father of her child, then fatally shot in Kentucky after a police pursuit. Ladies, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having us. Glad to be here. <laughs> I'm glad you are here because you do have a powerful testimony to help people in our community. And Kay, you started this organization. Can you tell us how that came about? Um, so in 2016, um, there was a lot of shootings going on um, and just a lot of violence within our community. Um, and so when I started to look around at who was causing the crime or why the issues was happening, I realized a lot of these young people were my friend's children, my cousin's children, you know, family members. And it was just kind of like everybody, you know, wanted to do something but didn't know what to do. Um, so I decided at that point, you know, there's something that we got to do, even if it's just to get all the mothers together and say, hey, we are tired. We don't want this to happen. You know, if she has to bury her son, that's mm. going to affect me and vice versa. Mm. So I went on and, and kind of got behind these mothers and said, hey, you know, can we do something and just kind of shake these boys up and let them know, you know, we are a community, we are friends and we are family. You know, a lot of them had taken baths together and played together. There was pictures of them as, you know, toddlers and little people together. And now all of a sudden they were fighting and, you know, wanting to kill one another. Mm. And the one thing about your organization is that you provide help and healing. Yes to mothers and a great example is here yes. with Ms. Williams. And again, I'm so happy to have you on the show. And can you talk a little bit about your situation? Because when this happened, Skylar became everybody's daughter, everybody's sister. This community loves her and we love you. Oh, my daughter, she was truly a gift from God. I had no idea that her life would end the way it did. She was a mother to my grandson, Kylo Israel Williams, and he's such a precious gift. My daughter um, fell in love with a young man that at one point I believe he loved her, but then his love turned into an obsession. And she endured rapes that I knew nothing about. I think he was beating her, but she never would admit it to me. But I watch my grandson and some of the things that he does, I'm like, definitely he saw some things he shouldn't have saw. And um, when she decided to get out of that relationship, you know, at first it was back and forth, back and forth, like any young couple would. You know, you break up, you get back together, you break up, you get back together. But when she decided that she was done completely, man, I saw a side of Tyrell that I didn't have a clue existed. I knew something wasn't right with him, but I could never put my finger on it because I just never dreamed that it would happen. And I beg any parent that if you feel like something's not right with someone your daughter is dating, please start immediately trying to see what's going on and see if you can end that relationship where your child won't become a victim. That's all right. That's tough. And you, you are so strong with everything that has happened, Ms. Williams. You are such a strong lady. I, I can't imagine, can't, I don't think anyone can imagine. So you being here to talk about it and helping other people, that means so much. With you working together, Kay, how are you helping as so, you deal with this? Um, so some of the things that um, Mothers United to Save is, is that a complete grassroots effort. Um, 
And so it's like I'm in a whirlwind sometimes just, you know, people call and it's like, hey, what about this or what about that? So like I'm always open to working with people in the community, figuring out how we can work together to better um, not just this organization, but to really, truly help people. And so when this happened and, um, you know, me and Re Renee have known each other for a long time, mm -hmm. sometimes uh, um, things are closer to your front door than others. Um, and so this one kind of hit a lot, lot closer to home. It also put a spin on where the direction Mothers United to Say was. It was more of, you know, violence in the streets and, you know, shootings in the streets. But we often forget that violence is violence no matter how it comes. Um, whether it's domestic violence, whether it's, you know, friendship violence, whatever it is, it's violent. And if it results in someone's death, then that's even worse. Um, so we want to provide like support groups. I want mothers to, I want to provide a space for mothers to feel comfortable to come out and help one another. Um, you have a woman here who is completely broken. You know, you lose your baby. You don't know which direction to go. You don't know what to do. You don't know who to reach out to. Who better to help you navigate those feelings, those concerns that hurt than someone who's been there? Mm, I can't true. relate to Renee, you know, mm. because I have not been there. But there's plenty of mothers out here who have walked in these shoes, mm -hmm. you know, and they figured out how to go through. Mm -hmm. And one thing in this city, that was one thing that we didn't have. We didn't have groups and, you know, things where women could come together and say, hey, you know, one to another, let's help one another. Let's build a bridge through this. Let's become a support system. Let's figure out how we can take our message back into the community and stop these things from happening to other families. So that's where I want to go. And Renee has been nothing but great um, in trying to, you know, help this get moving. It's early on, you know, and I know her pain is great. So it's like to see her fight and want to do this. I want that to happen for other women. I want other women to know there is healing after mm -hmm. this. There sure you is. Know? But at, at, when it happens to one, it's kind of like, mm -hmm. I don't know how to deal with this. I don't know, you know, what step to take. What do I do? How do I even just get up tomorrow? Yes. You know, yes. but yes. someone who's been there is able to say, this is how, mm -hmm. or this might work, or let's try this. Let's work together. So that's the hopes of this group is not only to help with the violence in the community. I want to help the offenders as well. You know, the ones that may be targeted in this you know gun violence it, it comes from a source and generally it's not you know when you're not looking at it in a domestic violence like it's some type of beef or some type of drama that's going on and like you said if we as parents and communities can pay attention and start to see these things we can get in front of them we know these kids you know at some point somebody in this community has babysat somebody's child so we know these kids so if you could talk to them then you can talk to them now. This is a community problem. A lot of the tragedies that happen, people can grieve in private, but you didn't have that opportunity mm. to even do that because mm. when everything happened that day, mm. yes. it was not only local news, yes. it was statewide. Yes. It was all around the country. Yes, yes. So, it went over to um, England. Every, everyone heard about this. So it was like, you didn't, you didn't even have an opportunity just to grieve in, in private about that everybody was there so but what can we do to to bring everyone together to fight against this because like you had mentioned seeing the signs what i question is where is the breakdown because there had to be a breakdown somewhere miss williams because i know it sounds like you were doing so much to protect skylar i was i you know every time my we went to the police station because he had protection orders against everybody in my home. And he had an emergency uh, protection order against my daughter, I mean, Skylar. And so um, he constantly broke his protection order. What he did, and, and the officers made it clear to us, if we, anybody did anything to try to protect my daughter, as far as, you know, putting their hands on this man that my daughter would go to jail. But every time we called and said, hey, he's breaking his, you know, he's stalking her. Hey, he's doing this, he's doing that. Nothing was done. Nothing was done. We got to the point where we felt abandoned. We were just out there, you know, at this person's whim. Whenever he decided he wanted to stalk her, he could. And then he worked at Enterprise. So he was in a different car every, every day. 
I, you know, I know he stalked my baby every day. How could you protect yourself against somebody like that that has all these resources and then you, it seems like the police are not listening to anything you said? My speech to them would be the same speech every time. Look, my baby looks like, looks like she's 12 years old. She's small. She's tiny. This man is not interested in his son. He wants my daughter. Over and over, I said this. He wants my daughter, and I felt like nobody was listening except the Ontario Police. Let me applaud them. Let me applaud Ontario Police Department. They wasn't trying to hear it. They wasn't trying to deal with this boy and all of his shenanigans because he had a cell phone that he had given my daughter. Unbeknownst to us, he was tracking her with this cell phone. I think because he was also going to be a trooper, maybe they didn't think that he was much of that much of a threat to her. I don't know. I don't, you know, I'm, but it shouldn't have happened. And I would advocate for any young girl that feels like she's not being heard because I know what that feels like. I will walk with any parent and their child to the into the police station and say, hey, you guys need to pay attention. We don't want another Skylar Williams to happen again. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, I want to talk about now how you're doing. Yes. Now that all this time has happened, because there is healing yes, that, is, is. that is taking place, and I know people in our community, they want to know how you're doing, how your daughter's doing, how Kylo's doing, and also, okay, the role that you're helping to bring this family together and keep, keep the love flowing. We'll have more when Turn Up the Volume continues. My vision to move Mansfield forward involves connecting our downtown community to the Imagination District all the way to the Miracle Mile right here. We have to vote on November 5th. Vote Don Bryant for mayor, moving Mansfield forward. Turn Up the Volume is filmed inside the Tritico Building located at 162 North Diamond Street in downtown Mansfield. Newly renovated space is for lease. Call 419-526 1695 for inquiry. This episode is brought to you by Dugan Real Estate, the most trusted name in homes. For all the latest real estate listings, visit DuganRA.com. Welcome back to Turn Up the Volume and our conversation with the founder of Mothers United to Save, Kay Smith, and also Ms. Renee Williams. Thank you ladies so much for being on the show. Before we went to break, we were talking about how you were helping Miss Williams and through this healing process. And talk a little bit about that, Kay. Um, so we um, are going to start some good things. Um, and that's the one thing I just keep telling her. You know, mm -hmm. I told her, I said, you know, through every tragedy, something good has to yes. come. Um, and so what I tell her, as beautiful as Skylar is and still will be yes. for her to keep her present and to help other people and yes. keep her around, keep her relevant um, through that, that that will be healing and that will, you know, continue to cause healing. Because every young woman that hears this story that decides to walk away and know I want to save myself, that's another kudo. It's not in vain. Even though it seems like it sometimes, it's not in vain, you know. And we, we talk often about you know, her strength and uh, God and her peace and all of that coming from God, mm -hmm. you know. So sometimes we, we have to go through a little rough patch mm -hmm. to get to the other side of something yeah. beautiful. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're working on. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's going to be all right. It is. It really is going to be all right. Yeah. Okay, for anyone out there that would like to contact you mm -hmm. that is in need, Mm -hmm. And they may be going through something right now, or even someone that that's looking at you, Miss Williams, and they're saying, "You know what? I want to connect with her," mm -hmm. and they just want to, they just need help. How can they get in contact with you? Well, most of the time, I spend most of my days at NCIC mm -hmm. <laughs> at one thirty four <laughs> North Main Street, um, and we we do so much programming at NCIC. I, I have to give um, a shout out to my job. Um, Deanna West Torrance, who is my boss, um, found me, you know, just doing an event. And I was literally just trying something. I had no clue what I was doing or what my plans were. 
And she walked up to me and said, I want you to come and see mm -hmm. me tomorrow. And from there, every vision that I had, her along with um, Pastor Walter Jordan, mm -hmm. got behind me and said, let's make this happen. So all of my work is done through NECIC for the most part. And we are at 134 North Main Street. We do a lot of good things there. So um, I can be reached that way um, or everybody around here has my phone number. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so somebody can help you oh, find me. Oh, can you give us your um, number? My phone number is 419-295-2966. Um, and I'm open, like I said, to working with anybody. If anybody has any ideas behind this, I want to hear. You know, I don't care if you think it's stupid or you don't know how to make it happen. Let's connect. Because if we try a bunch of things, yeah. something's going to matter. Something. And I know you also have T-shirts now, yes. too, and I love those T-shirts yes. because on the back of that T-shirt, you have the names. Yes. So everyone can remember yes. and also celebrate the life. And can you show us those T-shirts, Kay? So this is a T-shirt that we created this year, which was a new design. Thank you to Eddie Love. Um, and he has these at his shop um, down on Main and 6th Street. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I originally gave it to him, I was like... Um, you know, Eddie, I'm not sure. He was like, well, what design do you want this time? And I was like, I don't know. You know, mm -hmm. I said, just think of something and throw it at me. And he went, and this is what That's was created. Beautiful. And mm -hmm. when he showed it to me, mm -hmm. I was just like, yeah. I could have never told you that, but mm -hmm. it, it just felt like it was exactly what mm -hmm. I wanted it to look like. Yes. You know, because we don't see the tears at no. night. No. You know, we don't know what these families go through. You know, when it's all said and done, you know, families go home. People mm -hmm. go home and they go back to their normal lives. And it is a process for that yes, family for a long time. You know, so we forget to go back and check or we forget to give a call. So those are the type of things that I want to keep to the forefront of this community. Let's stop forgetting about each other. Yes. Let's start loving one another. That's right. Yes. You know, the way it used to be. You know? oh, yes. so. And I love this because yes. every name on there, precious. Yes. Precious in every single yes. way. And we honor them. Yes. And Kay, thank you so thank much you. for and I doing this that. For you, Renee. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that is a beautiful shirt. Oh. Yes. It's beautiful. Yes. Well, when we come back, we are going to meet Alexis Williams, Renee's other daughter, and she's going to give us a wonderful update of how she's doing and how she's taking care of mom and also Kylo. We'll have more when Turn Up the Volume continues. <laughs> My vision to move Mansfield forward involves connecting our downtown community to the Imagination District all the way to the Miracle Mile right here. We have to vote on November 5th. Vote Don Bryant for mayor, moving Mansfield forward. Turn Up the Volume is filmed inside the Tritico Building located at 162 North Diamond Street in downtown Mansfield. Newly renovated space is for lease. Call 419-526-1695 for inquiries. This episode is brought to you by Dugan Real Estate, the most trusted name in homes. For all the latest real estate listings, visit DuganRA.com. Welcome back to Turn Up the Volume. And now we're joined with Alexis Williams, the older sister of Skylar Williams. Alex, welcome to the show. I'm so glad you're here. And we want to talk about um, the good things that are going on right now because you're working, you and mom are together and you're taking care of your nephew and you have been such a rock for your mom. Yes, she has. <laughs> yes, she has. Thank you. Um, well, right now, um, it's only been six months and it feels like it, it just happened last week, in my opinion. I'm still in therapy, but... Um, Honestly, we have peace. We can wake up every day knowing that we're missing somebody, mm -hmm. but we can continue on with our day and our lives. And Kylo, he, he's, he's doing really good. Um, her, him and my um, daughter, Honesty, um, Kylo and Honesty are cousins, so they're basically growing up together as brothers and sisters. They have a good bond with yes. each other. I love the way they interact. Mm -hmm. It remind me how my sister and I um, grew up together in the same household, so I just love that about them. Yeah. And even even though all this stuff is going on, it is not affecting the, ba the babies, mm -hmm. the little 
babies at all. Yeah. So they're healthy. They're yeah. And I watch, I watch Kylo closely to see how he's developing and he's happy. He's, he's functioning just like in any other, you know, he's, he's doing very well. I watch him. I pray over him and God is so faithful. I see him progressing like he knew something happened because he used to wait on his mom every night at 11 o'clock, wait for her to walk through the door. And I started praying, Lord, help my baby, help my grandson. Even if he has to forget, forget his mom, help him. But you know, when, when my baby would be sleeping, my grandson would be sleeping, I look at him, he starts smiling. He never smiled in his sleep before. And I knew that God was dealing with him and he was allowing him to interact with his mother. I'm telling you, you can't put God in a box. You can't say what he will and he will not do. Because I've always worshiped and been a, a, a child of the king, but he showed me something different. I've always had an intimate relationship with him, but he's showing me different sides of him that you just have to experience for yourself. He's, he's a loving God and he's always present. And it's so good to see you here. Honey, and to see you smiling, yeah. and to see you here with mom, with yeah. even with all that you've been through, yeah. all that you've been through, you still are a light. Oh, thank you. you still are a light, and I know that Skyler is looking down oh, on yes. you, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you are continuing her legacy. That's what's yeah. so important. You are continuing her legacy, and I do believe that you are also helping other families. And you're going to save other young girls. I hope that are so. I, 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 hope I, so. I believe that you will. And I believe that you will, too. I, I believe. hope so. Because, so. you know, no parent should have to endure losing their child, especially to violence. You know, that's, that's a hard thing to go, deal with. You don't expect to bury your child. And to have to do that, you have to have the Lord with you. I don't see how any parent can go through it without him. Miss Williams, Alexis, thank you so much for being on Turn On The Volume. And I look forward to having you come back later on in the year as you're going out and you are speaking and touching more lives because I know you're just going to have so many more great things to talk about. Thank you for tuning in to Turn Up The Volume. I thought that my family was going to have to hold each other together in private, but when I saw how this story was going, I was like, Lord, this, yes, I said, this is you. This ain't nothing but you. Because it moved me how people were affected by my baby. That I couldn't believe someone would care about our pain and then say they were feeling the same thing. I, I just could because my pain was great. My pain was devastating. Everything in my life was shook. Like I said, the only thing that was left was Jesus. And he had to hold me. All I could do was call him, say, Jesus. I couldn't even breathe. Sometimes I couldn't even catch my breath. And I said, Lord, I need you to breathe for me. Y'all don't know. You don't know how that feels. You got to ask your creator to breathe for you. That's how much pain I was in. Domestic violence can happen to anyone, regardless of race, age, sexual orientation, religion, or gender. Domestic violence affects people of all socioeconomic backgrounds and educational levels. According to the U.S. Department of Justice, an average of 24 people per minute are victims of rape, physical violence, or stalking by an intimate partner, totaling more than 12 million people in the U.S. every single year. Domestic violence not only affects those who are abused, but it also has a substantial effect on family members, friends, co-workers, other witnesses, and the community at large. If you or someone you know needs help, call the National Domestic Violence Hotline at 1-800-799-7233 or go online to domesticshelters.org.